the plan has been to kick the can down the road by just extending the eviction moratorium. But what happens when the states don't abide by this eviction moratorium? Hey, it's Noel coming to you with a, another video here. Like I said before, it's been a little while since I did some videos, but lots of news today or this week. I'll start with jobless claims. You know, they're higher than expected. And this is always drives me crazy in the data world, whether it's real estate data, whether it's jobless claims data. Whenever anybody says it's higher than what Wall Street expects, expected. Well, you know what? It is what it is. And being a little bit higher than expected isn't a huge cause for concern. And it goes the same with the housing data. So jobless claims are a little bit higher, but also jobs created are ticking up. So this is all great things for the economy. You see a lot of news this week about house sales are down, prices are up, inventory is down. It's just a simple supply and demand issue here where we've got way more people looking for homes than there are homes being built. I mean, if you look at where home builders were back in 2005 previously and where they are now and what they're building, hopefully they can get to more homes going, but we've got a lot of issues with materials. Materials costs are off the charts. So all these things are, again, causing issues with a supply, thus pushing prices up. I think there's some other interesting news that came out, and this is a bigger issue. So Texas has decided that the Texas Supreme Court decided not to extend their order that the local eviction courts must follow the CDC eviction moratorium. This is a big deal because there's gonna be other states that are going to be following this. And I think that there's a bigger deal when this is all politicized, and we have not come up with a solution of what to do with all of the people that are going to have to be kicked out of their houses. They're going to have to be evicted because for every you know person that's not paying rent, there's a landlord not receiving rent. The majority of these landlords, 90% of them in the single family rental arena are small investors who own just a few homes. So these people are getting really, really hurt by not being able to collect their rent and it's causing many of them to not be able to pay. And if they happen to have a Fannie Mae mortgage, that can go hand in hand with they're getting a forbearance. But there's one difference here is that they're gonna have to pay back their payments. Whereas these tenants are not going to have to pay their rent. They are going to be able to live rent free not have to pay their rent. And I promise you, if a tenant is being told by the federal government they don't have to pay their rent, then there's gonna be something that's gonna be coming down the line uh, in the future. I've talked about this in the past. There's gonna be something that's gonna be coming down the line that's going to say that you cannot disqualify a tenant based on having an eviction against them if the federal government's telling them that they don't have to pay their rent. So that's gonna be some interesting things. But hey, Texas is opening the floodgates of evictions. This is leading to a lot of other issues when we're gonna be talking about where are these people People going to go that don't have a place to rent. You have landlords who can't pay their mortgage payments. You're going to have homes that are going into foreclosure because of this. And you have tenants now who are going to get kicked out. And these landlords are going to be filling those homes. That's great. But what about these tenants? What about these renters who are on the bottom rung of places to rent and they don't have a place to go down to? So many tenants, if they're renting a $2,000 a month home and they get into some hardship, they can go down to $1,000 a month or they can step down. But people in the bottom rung of renters, they don't have a place to go. And this is something that has not been figured out by the government on low-income housing and what to do here. So I think it's a big deal. I think it's something that we have to figure out. There is a whole class of renters who have lost jobs that may not get those jobs back soon. You know, when you talk about retail closing and more and more retail is going to close and things are going to online, this is a big issue. And we have to figure this out in our housing policy. And the plan has been to kick the can down the road by just extending the eviction moratorium. But what happens when the states don't abide by this eviction moratorium? What happens when the states say, we're not going to go by the CDC order and they believe it's unconstitutional, this will make it to the Supreme Court. And I have a feeling the Supreme Court's going to say, this CDC cannot get involved into private contracts because that's what's happening. So it's a big issue. It's something to watch. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do, but we have to figure it out. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.